Hey guys, Fishmonger here. Um, I wanted to make a quick video and just share with you something uh, I made um, one day when I was bored because uh, I had some time to kill and I like taking on little projects like this. Um, basically, it's a GUI that sits on top of the DSTM Zcash uh, CUDA miner that is used for NVIDIA graphics cards. If you're not familiar with the DSTM miner, I got a screen up on the... Um, our website up on the screen right now that shows the uh, forum on uh, Bitcoin bitcointalk.org that shows basically information on this particular miner and uh, links on where you can download it and some of the information uh, from it and it's a uh, it's a pretty good miner it's a pretty stable miner it's been around for a while uh, it competes with the EWBF miner uh, excavator and then a newer one called B miner so those are like the four major um, equihash miners that I can think of right now and they're all they're all pretty decent. Some have their pros and cons, but I am partial to DSTM, and I I like these miners. I just don't like the interfaces. You know, I'm I can deal with command line. I work with it a lot, but when it comes to these programs, the simple they are. You know, they really it's not that hard to make a GUI for them. I don't know why they actually just don't ship them with GUIs, but that's fine. I think they'll get a higher adoption rate from a lot of people who are new to mining. Um, but I uh, decided to just kind of write my own. So up on uh, the Fishmonger website, uh, which is up on the screen, and the link will be down below, I've got a page for mining. And basically it's got the download links for what I'm now calling the simple GUI miner. Um, I'm open to new suggestions for new names because this is just kind of uh, all I could think of in five seconds. Um, and what it is, is just a, it's just a GUI. It sits on top of the DSTM miner. It sits on top of 0.5.7, which is the revision uh, it works with. It might work with the newer ones. Um, I haven't tested it yet, but I do know that 0.5.7 also has a cracked version out or a hacked version or something that basically redirects the 2% miner fee to your own wallet. Um, I don't do that and I don't, um, condone that if that's the proper word but i i you know the developer put a lot of time into it and he earns a lot of money off of this right now but i think it's money that he is earned because he makes me 98 dollars for every two dollars i give him and as far as i'm concerned you know i go out to the a restaurant i'll buy a steak and you know i'll do an 18 20 percent tip on the whole bill um, I could be throwing down a fifteen twenty dollar tip in one night just to a for one meal for somebody who just serves me some food. Um, this guy basically, I'm tipping him two percent, which is not really a lot. He's he's making me a lot of money, so I'm okay with hooking him up. So if people wanted to run the cracked version, you certainly could, but um, that's not my cup of tea. But uh, downloading this script, this is just it's just GUI. It's written in Auto Hotkey. Um, basically here's the source code for it. It's not much. It's only 444 lines, 15,000 characters. Um, a copy of the source code is included in either one of these download files. Everything's open source. Feel free to modify it and do whatever you want with it. I really don't care. Um, the only thing I do ask is that you don't modify it and then try to sell it as like your own. Cause I don't think that's kind of cool. So, um, you know, if you want to change the name, say simple GUI binder by whatever your name is, that's perfectly fine. But um, don't sell my program, please. Thank you. Um, the top guy here is basically just the script, which is the auto hotkey script. So if you run auto hotkey, you can just download this as the AHK file. Um, and then basically just the readme, I think that goes along with it. All you have to do is put this in the same directory as the DSTM miner. And you do have to rename the miner to miner underscore DSTM. That's the only real prerequisite to make the script work with this. Um, if it, or I mean, I guess you could go into the script itself and just change this so it says run and then whatever the miner's name is, you can do that. That's the other way around it. So that's completely up to you. Um, but then in addition to that, I also have another download here which is includes the DSTM miner. If you don't have it, it basically will give that to you. And then also a compiled version of this script along with the source code script, which you can basically just um, 
open with a standard uh, notepad file or any other kind of like notepad editor or anything like that to, to change things around. Um, and then basically, if you wanted to, if you don't want to deal with AHK or anything like that, if you just wanted to run it, all you got to do is basically run the executable and it will bring up the program itself, which as you can see here is the simple GUI miner. So this doesn't do anything special, doesn't add any features to the DSTM miner, doesn't give you extra hash, it doesn't take away any hash, it doesn't do anything other than gives you a graphical interface to be able to interact with the DSTM miner. So if you wanted to mine to like nice hash, let's say, basically you type in the server address for nice hash here. Um, in this case, it's equihash.usa.nicehash.com because DSTM works with Equihash. This is the current port, 3357. This is my wallet. Um, and then basically, if you wanted to name your rig, you can do that. Um, and then basically, you can select whatever GPU you want to use or if you want to mine with every GPU, uh, just leave them blank. And hit start. And it will basically load up the miner and it will start mining. Now... Uh, by default, it actually runs in what's known as quiet mode because quiet mode runs the DSTM miner, the command window, but it just runs it as a background task, which is why you don't see it showing up on the screen here. If you actually want it to show up, all you have to do is take off quiet mode and you can see it pops it up and basically runs it at the same time. But I don't feel like having multiple windows open and I don't need to see the information that's on here because what my script will do is automatically take like the last 10 lines of the log file and put them up on the screen for you to see. So to me, it's just kind of like redundant information that is not uh, not needed. Um, there's a couple of uh, buttons here that say server type. And really what they do, and if you bring up the help, I'll just show you real quick, is they help, they tell the program what type of server you're gonna be logging to, essentially meaning what is the syntax of the command you wanna send it. So for instance, NiceHash and Flypool use the same kind of syntax, which is actually right here. Uh, it says server type one, which basically says, you know, runs the miner, it adds the server name, the port, uh, the user is username dot miner name. Okay. If you look at, oops, if you look at server type two, server type two is for servers like Mining Pool Hub. And Mining Pool Hub uses the syntax that's very similar except it also adds a password um, to it, which it's actually blank or X by default. I think Mining Pool Hub doesn't even uh, require one, but I have it in there just in case you, you do want to use that. And then the third type, server type three, is for um, pools like Nanopool. And the way they have their um, syntax set up to in order to work with it is it's username dot minor name forward slash your password. They don't accept it if you enter it like this. You have to enter it like this. So the there's a lot of other mining pools out there. Um, I don't even want to, there's hundreds of mining pools out there that you can use. So you just want to match whatever their required syntax is to log into it. Basically just make sure you select the right server type for when you, uh, you mine to it. Um, over on the right hand side here, real simple, there's five different profiles you can save. So like, let's say like I mine on Flypool a lot, right? And in my spare time, I want to mine on Flypool and use all my GPUs. I can set it up like this. Um, and then let's say on, um, I also want to set up a different profile for Flypool that only uses GPU one. Basically I can do that. I'm going to hit S5. So what this is going to do is it's going to save all this information into profile five and I'll rename this as Flypool one. Oh, whoops, a little bit of a glitch there. Apparently I'm calling the wrong, uh, I'm supposed to be renaming this, not this. Whoops, I'll fix that. But um, what this does is basically now, if you look here, Flypool itself has no GPUs or selected, which means it's gonna mine with all of them. Flypool one only selects the first GPU. So if I were to start this, what this will do is run Flypool, but it only select GPU one meaning the GPU, the main one inside my computer won't run. So if I wanted to play a game or something like that, I can do that. So I can mine with the one and then not the other, um, which is which is one of the nice things I kind of like about this particular program because oftentimes 
I do want to be mining on my main computer, but be playing a game or doing something in the background that requires uh, the main video card. So I can just quick open up this program um, and then basically change which GPUs I want to use and then start it. And it saves me the trouble of having to go in and edit batch files or have multiple batch files for each different kind of um, profile. Um, this just basically saves everything um, into one real nice, easy to access um, format. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take a look at this right now. That's probably just a stupid. Uh, I called the wrong button. I had to have called the wrong button because if I rename this, fly pool. So that one works fine. Nano pool does also. Nano pool. Yeah, they're all. I just called the wrong button here. So I'll, I'll make a quick update on that and I'll throw that up on the website. So that'll be changed for when it's on or if you go to download this, it'll be fixed by the time you see this video. Um, but that's pretty much it. So you guys got any questions or anything like that? You know, shoot me over um, questions. I'll, I'll try to help you out. If you're interested in doing simple programming, um, Auto Hotkey is a really nice uh, program. Really simple to use. It is a great tutorial and a great help file for um, working with Windows scripting and interacting with your Windows uh, computer. Um, and it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty robust and powerful. You can do a lot of stuff with it, or you can just do simple things with it. Um, it all really depends on how much uh, work you want to put into it. So this is pretty much it. I'm going to be uh, signing off for right now, and I appreciate you watching the video, and I will catch you later.